All right, we're back. Uh, what I wanted to do is I would definitely want to do some butt mapping for the speakers just to get you guys some more practice with butt maps, right? And of course, you could kind of find pictures of buttons, even use the pictures um, or similar pictures if you can find them of the reference clock, right? Um, I just wanted to really quickly kind of remind you guys that um, I use this as a quick example, but um, remember, you can actually do a full clock face uh, one if you want to, right? Uh, it's kind of one of those things where I could easily go back to this clock face texture, uh, turn our projection brush on, go to image browser, right? And I've kind of already gone to a specific folder here where I've kind of saved what was gonna be our butt map for our speakers, but also a clock face radio, right? So I can hit stencil and I can easily come in here and I can just kind of repaint this with a proper clock face, right? So, so I can just kind of left click drag to paint and you notice it can kind of paint over everything else if you wanted to, right? Depends on the blend mode, all that stuff. Um, Injection brush, 100 strength. We just kind of paint over this, right? So we can easily just kind of get that exact kind of clock um, effect if we want to. Now you'll notice it's not all going away. That's because there is an incandescent layer, right? If we turn that incandescent layer off, you see how we can just see the actual uh, normal clock face. So easily you could just go in here and like we said, kind of just use a proper clock face stencil texture kind of on its own layer, right? And you even see we can kind of just turn that off, right? And if I want to, remember, you can select a layer, right click on that layer, and we could delete it, right? So I can get rid of that one, go back to this new one, right click on that, duplicate it, right? Because I want the original, so I want an actual color layer, but I also want a glow layer as well. So we can right click on that again and move, right? So we can delete layers when we right click on it. We can duplicate them so we have a, a copy that we can move to a different channel. And move selected to is really just allowing us to move to different channels. So I can move to incandescence again. Now you'll notice it goes below that kind of base layer we created, that black one, right? So we can just kind of left click drag to drag it above. And you see how that really kind of creates this extra kind of glow for it. So you can see how the incandescence really does kind of give an extra little pop, right? Remember incandescence is really just a way of saying glow. Uh, in fact, when we take it to Maya, you're going to see we're going to put it in the emission channels, right? Um, Unreal would actually do it that way also. Um, other software calls it different stuff. Uh, so uh, incandescence is one of many words that means glow, basically, or uh, kind of like an illuminating light source. Uh, so in this case, it just took the opportunity to kind of paint a proper clock face on there and give you a little bit of recap on the incandescent levels, uh, layers, right? So incandescence is going to allow us to do glow. Uh, and that's great. Um, so just uh, kind of a quick recap of that. I thought that'd be great to just kind of reshow you that I'm really looking for something more like this, <laughs> right, than the other one. Um, and you'll just have to find some of your own textures online for that stuff. Uh, now in this case, what I wanted to do is I wanted to do the speaker uh, holes, right? Um, you notice how we didn't model that stuff in. That's the kind of detail that usually is not going to be modeled in for most uh, studios and most models. It uh, doesn't mean you'll never run into that where you'd have to maybe possibly model every little speaker hole, but it's honestly going to be a rarity. Um, you're usually going to either do sculpting or uh, texturing like we're doing here for that stuff. So in this case, what we really want to do is we just want to uh, make a bump map. We don't really need a color channel for this, right? Uh, we can just create a strict, uh, straight bump map for this, right? So kind of get a good view there for the top. It's just going to be some speaker holes up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer, right? Um, so remember, you can always take existing layers, repaint them. Uh, you can always kind of um, copy them and move them to different channels, right? You know, just right clicking, move selected to. Uh, you notice how you can even drag and drop uh, the layers so that you can put them below other layers as well. Oftentimes when you move to a different layer, it'll be below the other ones, right? So that's why I kind of had to drag and move it up there so it was on top. But in this case, I'm going to go new layer, right? It's that little kind of uh, three white pages right there. And we're going to call this uh, speakers, right? There we go. Now in this case, I'm going to change my channel to bump map, right? So you see how you can actually create uh, a bump map or an incandescent map right from its own, uh, right from the create paint layer, right? You don't have to create it and then move it to, you can actually tell it to be a bump map right from the start. Uh, so we'll hit okay. And then you see there's now a bump map grouping. And you'll notice one of the things about layers here is that as we create more layers and if we put them in diffuse or incandescence, you'll notice that they're kind of their own little groups, right? These three layers are only for the color. These two layers are only for the glow. So now there's a whole new layer for the bump itself. 
Now, I'm gonna make sure to turn my stencil off. Uh, make sure to go back to paintbrush, right? Um, because in this case, I want to use this as just painting the speakers, right? So on paintbrush, I'm gonna go to flood paint this, right? Because it's our base layer, right? Your, your layer that's gonna be the bottom should always be flood painted, right? That's because um, that's gonna provide at least a foundation layer that's uh, filled in all of its pixels, right? All the pixels are filled in for you. Uh, that way when you take it to other software, because this is eventually gonna come out of my box and back into Maya, um, it'll not have any empty pixels or partially transparent pixels. Any layers that are above it, those can be partially transparent. They can have empty pixels because we're eventually gonna merge these all down to one. And so they'll, uh, all the kind of uh, filled in pixels on the bottom layer will still be there, right? They'll just be all merged down. So in this case, we don't want to set this to be um, uh, necessarily uh, uh, black though, right? Because we kind of want a, a neutral, if you will, right? Uh, so we'll go to color and we'll kind of pick kind of a mid gray, right? So something kind of in the middle gray area, hit done. And we'll scroll down to flood paint layer, right? So we're just in paintbrush. Remember if you scroll down, there's the flood paint layer and that kind of sets it so that every pixel in this layer is filled in with this mid gray. Now, in this case, uh, we're probably gonna want to pick black, right? So we'll kind of go back to black um, because that's what we're gonna paint with. Um, although remember, this is actually our paintbrush. I want projection brush, we're gonna use stencil. So I click on projection brush and we'll make sure to go up to here, pick kind of that black. And we're gonna set a stencil. So I'm gonna go back to image browser again. Uh, remember, um, this, uh, this is in the other videos, but if I click on this little opening folder, you can actually go find kind of where your texture folder is at, right? So wherever you've been creating a folder that's got all your textures, you just select it and then you'll see all the other folders that are inside of there. And in this case, uh, I think I've been putting these temporarily in alphas, so I'll just double click on that. And I can click on this one. You see how it's kind of this nice little dotted pattern that fits pretty square. That's gonna be something good to find, right? You can look on textures.com. You might do kind of a little bit of a Google search. Remember with Google search though, look for copyrights. You wanna make sure that there's no watermarks all over it. Um, so we'll hit white S, because that'll set it to stencil right here. I'll go back to 3D view and we see it shows up. Remember, if it doesn't show up, uh, just go back in here, kind of select it again, hit white S, that'll usually make it show up. Um, currently, the stencil properties are up, so just make sure that's on. Uh, the only other things you might wanna be aware of is maybe kind of just uh, looking at um, visibility or multipliers stuff. Um, if those are turned down to zero, that might not be showing anything with your stencils. Um, but in this case, projection brush is on. Uh, our stencil's showing up, so I'll just click back on projection brush again. Uh, because uh, we can set our colors, our transparency. And you notice the bump layer is selected. So maybe I'm gonna hit S, uh, middle mouse button so I can move this kind of up here. Maybe uh, S right mouse button to scale it. Um, maybe even make it smaller. We can always kind of get smaller speaker buttons here for ourselves. And what we can do is we just kind of start to paint. Now in this case, um, with that black, you see how it's kind of wanting to paint everything black. So in this case, we want to reproduce this, we might actually set the color to white. And you see how that actually will start to paint it, but you'll see how it might actually paint it a little too much because the white's making everything look raised. So control Z to undo. So we might even go back into that color and just kind of use that mid gray, right? That we kind of already selected. And you see how that'll actually do a better job of it, right? So you can see that we can actually go in here and very easily just paint this, right? And once again, we can see the beauty and power of stencils, right? Because we can just paint exactly the image we're seeing, right? Now, in this case, you'll notice how I kind of had to switch my colors around. That's because our bump layer itself was that mid gray. So, right, that mid gray was set to be zero. So any color that was below that was just uh, a bit too much, right? So when I picked black, it really tinted that whole entire layer black. So it was just going to paint it pushed in. When we went to white, right, it's not tinting it anymore, but the white in the stencil was making it look raised, right? And so that's why it kind of looked like it was a little more pronounced than it should have been because it was painting that white to be raised. So by actually switching to that mid gray, it kind of uh, picked a nice neutral, right? It was gonna paint mid gray uh, tinted, but you'd still get some of the blacks and the whites would be a lot more muted. So remember, uh, whatever color you pick for what you're painting with, and even what you're kind of uh, flood painted color with will determine how the bump map's gonna work. 
it's usually a good idea to have your bump map flood painted mid gray. That way you have uh, darker colors than mid gray to do negative or pushed in values, right? So I'll turn stencil off, you can see that there. And uh, lighter colors than that mid gray so that you can have parts that look raised. But even the projection brush itself can have a color, right? And that will affect it. Black just kind of tinted it to the point of just painting black, so it didn't paint the, the, the uh, spokes at all. It just kind of look, made it look like you're painting uh, pushed in. Uh, white was a little too much because it kind of made these sections raised too much. So we found that mid-gray actually worked great because that kind of muted this, the projection brush a little bit. And now you can see we have speakers. Once again, if you're not finding, like you don't like every little color, you can always go to paint erase, right? And I can always kind of erase stuff out here. Now in this case though, you'll notice it's kind of getting rid of everything, right? That's because we're creating empty pixels. So this might even be where you go back to paintbrush and kind of pick that mid gray, right? And that mid gray can paint it out. So you might initially think paint erase is what you want, but in this case, it's actually not, right? Because that will just make sure those pixels are fully empty, right? It will actually get rid of those pixels. Uh, and so it makes the bump, pap, um, bump map react in a weird way. Mid gray is better because then you're not getting rid of pixels. You're just kind of painting zero, right? So you see how kind of that mid gray paints out? So paint erase is cool, pretty cool, but in the case of bump maps, that might not be what you want, right? So you might actually want paintbrush mid gray to kind of paint out stuff. So you can kind of think of paintbrush mid gray on a bump map, particularly if you flood painted that bump map with mid gray, it's kind of your zero, right? It'll paint out the bumpiness. So you see how in this case, we didn't have to make a color for this one. We just wanted the bumpiness for the speakers. And once again, we can kind of see how butt maps are pretty cool to work with. Um, they allow us to add little kind of details that we wouldn't be able to get normally. Um, and just a little bit more about butt maps, right? Uh, mid gray is a good flood paint. Um, and then when you actually pick your stencil, uh, you might want to use mid gray for that, right? Because that will paint uh, things properly. All right. Uh, so I think that's a great place to stop. That's basically what I want you guys to do for the clock radio, right? Kind of maybe a little bit of stencil no uh, stamp noise, um, some glow, right, with the incandescent layers, and kind of get a bump map for the speakers, and that'll that'll work pretty well for that. All right, so I think that's a great place to stop.